If you're like me and you're still at home with this whole coronavirus situation, you probably have plenty of you know work to do at home, plenty of little projects. You probably even have a checklist of things that you wanna complete around the house. And you know, that happens a lot in Dynamics 365. You get requests once in a while or you have the need once in a while to create some kind of checklist. And that is what the tip today is all about. So let's start the countdown and let's go. So one of the things that people love about Dynamics 365 is two option fields, right? The ability to switch from yes or no with just a single click, or you can even convert them into a checkbox. So in a lot of cases, people look at creating a checklist with checkboxes. They all have a section or a place in the form where they'll have multiple checkboxes and they can go ahead and check them to say that something was done. So if you're following, for example, if you're, cre you're doing an audit or a project and there are 10, 15 different steps that you have to complete, in a lot of cases the request is for you to go and just check those things to say that you did them. Now you could also see them from the other perspective and add a little bit of automation where you will see it in a place where you create tasks, for example, and then have a workflow or flow do something when a task is complete. So if a task is complete, then a flow will kick in and check the box for that specific task. The idea is you wanna go quickly into that record in Dynamics and see where you're at and what has been completed just at a glance. But I don't find that as useful. I feel that the best practice in this case, at least in my opinion as a solution architect, is to use dates instead of checkboxes. And the reason for this is that dates give you the same functionality that you would get with a checkbox in this case, but it will give you even more intelligence that you can use in reports. So for example, instead of having a checkbox that says you completed a task, have a date that says when the task was completed. If there's no data on that field, that means that the task has not been completed. So it will be the same as having a two option field with no as the option. And then if you have a date in there, not only tells you the task was completed, but also tells you when it was completed, which is you know great information to have. So you can always go back and detect if there were bottlenecks. You can go back and you know see when was the last one of those tasks that you have completed. So you can go to advanced find and search for, let's say, find me all audits and sort by the completion of this task. So you can do a lot more by using a date field than using a checkbox. Again, same results, you can still see if the task or whatever that step, that one process was completed or not, but you get even more information to play with in case you need it. So I hope you enjoyed the tip this week and we'll see you next week.